بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله من بعد قال عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما كنت رضيف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا غلام إني أعلمك كلمات عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما he said that I was a young man on riding on the back of the camel with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said to me, O oh young boy I'm going to teach you some words of advice I'm going to give you some words of advice these are some jewels that only an adult could impart to a man that is coming into adulthood it's very important that when our children especially the boys, they reach a certain age that we begin to impart certain jewels that they can take with them for the rest of their lives. Umar he said, for the first seven years of your child's life, let them play. Play with them. He said, for the next seven years of your child's life, teach them. It's the educational period from seven to fourteen. He said, and for the remaining years of his life, just be his friend. Teaching period is over with. And this is where many parents run into problems. When the child is 14, 15, 16 years old, you're still trying to be, you know, the teacher. The child has to learn life lessons on their own at that point. But the Prophet وسلم, here is getting ready to impart some jewels of advice that Abdullah ibn Abbas and any other child can take with them for the rest of their lives. He said, Ya Ghulam, inni u'allimuka kalimat. I'm going to teach you some words of advice. He said, Ihfadillah yahfaduk. Protect Allah and Allah will protect you. Ihfadillah tajiduhu tujahak. Protect Allah and you will always find Allah in front of you. Just to look at those two statements. If he hadn't said anything else, that would have been sufficient. Protect Allah and Allah will protect you. Meaning, protect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion by doing what he commanded you to do and staying away from the things that he prohibited you. And you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you in your wealth, in yourself, in your children, in your life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you. As the things that we want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reciprocal. There's reciprocity when it comes to the things that we want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want Allah's protection, then you have to protect Allah's deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اللَّهُ مَنْ يَنْصُرُ That Allah will help those who help him you want something from Allah then you have to give Allah the same thing that you want from him as we talked before about mercy that our extension our relationship with one another as human beings is an extension of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if you want mercy from Allah then show mercy to other people you want forgiveness from Allah then show forgiveness to other people that's how it works you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help well then help Allah you want Allah's aid and assistance, then aid and assist Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ihfadillah, yahfaduk. Protect Allah and Allah will protect you. Ihfadillah, tajiduhu tujahak. Protect Allah and you will always find Allah in front of you. Bi nasrihi wa bi'awnihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. With his help, his aid, his assistance, you will always find Allah in front of you. Just think about the, the what is going on through the mind of a young man when you give this type of information to them. Wallah al it makes them feel like they can take on the world. They walk through the world without, no, without any fear. We make our children fear the world because we don't attach their hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the biggest mushkila with many of our Muslim children. Many Muslim children suffer through identity crises. Crises that they are going through in high school, in college, because the parents never took the time to connect their hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heart of the child is always connected to the parent. 
The Prophet وسلم, is cutting that off, connecting him directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Tawheed 101. Protect Allah and you will find Allah always in front of you. He said, Either sa'alta fas'alillah. If you ask anyone, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. Think about that. When our children, as young kids, come to us and ask, Abi, Umi, can I have such and such? Ask them, did you go ask Allah first? Did you ask Allah? Can you buy me this? Can you buy me that? Go make dua. Go ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. And then come ask him. Because now you are teaching the child that his connection is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I am only a sabab. I am only a means by which Allah will facilitate for you what he has decreed for you to have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is musabib, he is the one who facilitates. I'm only the, I'm, he's the facilitator and I am the only one that he is the means by which he is going to facilitate that to you. That is it. Even when our children begin to work, they understand that your boss is not the benefactor. Your boss is not the facilitator. The facilitator is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The benefactor is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your boss is just the means by which Allah is going to give you what he decreed for you to have. So the attachment is always to Allah. He never takes his eyes off of that. Never. He said, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ That if you ask anyone, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't ask anyone for anything. This is a principle that we can teach our children. Don't go around through the world asking people for things. Asking people for stuff. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fakat. Only. He said, وَإِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ If you seek help in anything, seek Allah's help. If you try to embark on anything and you want help, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his help. Think about our children that are in high school, in middle school, in college, and they're having exams, and they're having tests. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his help. You have children who resort to taking drugs. You have Muslim children who resort to marijuana. Who, because they believe that it's going to make them smarter when it comes to test time. Who believe that it's going to make their intibat, it's going to make their attention more sharp when it's time for them to take tests. La ilaha illallah. You're going to use something that Allah made haram to gain success in something that you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help in. La ilaha illallah. And just for the record, marijuana is haram. And then the young children will say, well, where is that in the Qur'an? Tayyip, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, whatever the messenger gives you, take it. And whatever the messenger forbids you, stay away from it. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullu muskirin khamrun wa kullu khamrin haram. That everything that alters the mind is considered khamr. So khamar is a generic term that is used for anything that intoxicates. We just normally translate khamar as alcohol. But khamar is anything that intoxicates. Kullu muskirin khamrun. Anything that intoxicates the mind is called khamar. Wa kullu khamrin haram. And everything that is khamar is haram. So don't ask, where is it in the Quran that marijuana is haram? Even anybody with an aql salim, anybody who has an intelligence that has not been tampered with can tell you that anything that alters your mind, lowers your sperm cell count, and any, or all of the other detriments that come along with these, these drugs, is haram. But he said, That if you seek help in anything, seek Allah's help. Seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. And he said, وَعَلَمْ أن الأمة لو اجتمعوا على أن ينفعوك بشيء لن ينفعوك إلا بشيء قد كتب الله لك. He said, and know that if a whole nation gathered together to benefit you with anything, they would only benefit you with what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has already decreed for you to have. They would only benefit you with what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This shows our children that no matter how many resources you have. How many people you know? How many networks you have? How many social media outlets you have? That I don't care how many people it is, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for you to have it, they will not be able to add anything except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already decreed for you to have. Because today we live in a time of resources. 
We live in a time where a person believes that because he has 1.2 million followers on Twitter or 1,000, 2,000 followers on Facebook, that that makes him someone. Those people will not be able to benefit you with anything except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already decreed for you to be benefited with. He said, He said that if a whole nation gathered together to harm you with anything, they would only harm you with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already decreed for you to be harmed with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, كتب المقادير Qadr al-Maqadir, that Allah decreed everything 50,000 years before He brought creation into existence. No matter what any nation gathered together to do to us as Muslims, individually or collectively, they would only do to us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already decreed for us to, ha for, to happen to us. And when you understand that as a child, you can walk through life comfortably. You can walk through life with your head up. You can walk through life understanding life on life's terms. And many people commit suicide. Many people resort to drugs. Many people resort to atheism and disbelief in God simply because they can't understand this one principle right here. And that is, whatever was going to happen to you was never going to miss you. And whatever missed you was never going to happen to you. Ma akhtaak. That whatever happened to you was never, whatever was decreed to happen to you was never going to miss you, and whatever missed you was never going to happen to you. The pins have been lifted and the pages are dry. Meaning, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is already recorded. Already recorded. Five pieces of advice that the Prophet sallallahu gave to Abdullah ibn Abbas, who was a ghulam, who had just reached the age of puberty, 13, 14 years old. He's given this last piece of advice as Abdullah ibn Abbas, anhuma, he later on became one of the great scholars of Islam. And he became, in the community, took the time to impart these pieces of advice to them as children so that they can grow up and become the future leaders of Islam. هذا وصل الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وسبحانك ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله